Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and today I will be talking about a book called Curious Minds by Janet Ivanovich and Fief Sutton. You may recall that I mentioned that I was going to be talking about this book last week and that it kind of got pushed back a few weeks, and that is because I said it at the end of the podcast that I was doing, and then I got two author interviews scheduled, which is something that I love to do. So if you haven't listened to those author interviews, I did I did two, as I said, one with author Mitchell F. Jones, who writes mysteries, and another with author Melissa Scholes Young, author of her debut novel, Flood, and they're both great, and you will want to go check those interviews out and meet those authors and get to know them and maybe look into their books and, and find a new author that you might love. So as I mentioned, this particular book review got pushed back, and I just wanted to go back and pick it up since I did say that this was what I was going to be talking about. Now, you may know Janet Ivanovich's name. She writes the Stephanie Plum series, and I reviewed that series in one of my earlier podcasts, one of my earliest podcasts, actually, toward the beginning of my time here with the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. She has written 24, I believe, Janet, um, Stephanie Plum books, and the 25th one is coming out in probably November. I'd have to double check on that. And so she's been writing those for a long time. They're very popular. They are a lot of fun. They're lighthearted. They have mystery. They have humor. They have uh, crazy, zany characters that are always getting themselves into strange scrapes. She has also written the... Um, Fox and O'Hare series, along with a, a fellow author Lee Goldberg, and I also reviewed that series um, on an earlier podcast, so you may want to go check those podcasts out as well if you are unfamiliar with either of those series. And she's writing these this new series, the um, M- Night and Moon series, and the first one of that is, as I said, called Curious Minds, and it's with... Fief Sutton, who is, I looked it up on the internet to see how to pronounce Fief because it's spelled P-H-O-E-F and I wasn't sure. I thought maybe Fief, but I wasn't sure. So I did look it up to see how it's pronounced. And it is um, the nickname of Robert Christopher Sutton, who is an Emmy Award winning writer. So he has written for television. He's written for the theater. He's done a lot of different kinds of writing, different uh, for television. Uh, movies. So he has a lot of different types of writing experience and now he is writing this Night and Moon series with Janet Ivanovich. There are two of those books out. Curious Minds, as I said, is the first one followed by Dangerous Minds. Dangerous Minds is on my list of things to read. I have not gotten to it yet. One of the joys and um, hmm, I won't say frustrations because it's not exactly a frustration. I mean, it's a really good problem to have. One of the joys of having this podcast now is that I am reading so many authors that I never might have heard of otherwise because I've been doing so many author interviews and I really love that. It's so much fun. It's so much fun to not only talk to the authors but also to get to read these books that I might not have picked up otherwise. I haven't found one so far that I have, you know, really disliked. There's been great things about all of the books that I have enjoyed, and I've enjoyed reading some different books that I might not have read otherwise. So I'm a little behind on the books that I might be reading if I weren't reading for the the podcast. So I do apologize that I've only read the first one, but... 
I will get to the second one, and if you haven't read either of them, you may want to check this series out. So let me give you an overview of the first book, and this is from the description on the Amazon website. It says, New York Times bestseller Janet Ivanovich, best-selling author of the Stephanie Plum series, teams up with Emmy-winning writer Fief Sutton for a brand new series of mysteries featuring Emerson Knight and Riley Moon, a dynamic duo with instant and undeniable chemistry. Emerson Knight is introverted, eccentric, and has little to no sense of social etiquette. Good thing he's also brilliant, rich, and some people might say handsome, or he'd probably be homeless. Riley Moon has just graduated from Harvard Business and Harvard Law. Her aggressive Texas spitfire attitude has helped her land her dream job as a junior analyst with megabank Blaine Grunewald. At least Riley Moon thought it was her dream job, until she is given her first assignment, babysitting Emerson Knight. What starts off as an inquiry about missing bank funds in the Knight account leads to inquiries about a missing man, missing gold, and a life and death race across the country. Through the streets of Washington, D.C., and down to the underground vault of the Federal Reserve in New York City, an evil plan is exposed. A plan so sinister that only a megalomaniac could think it up, and only the unlikely duo of the irrespe- irrepressibly charming Emerson Knight and the tenacious Riley Moon can stop it. So it is definitely in that genre of uh, caper, as uh, are the Fox and O'Hare series, as kind of the, Jan- the the Stephanie Plum series. You get this teaming of two very different people you know a man and a woman so you get that chemistry you know there's definitely tension there of course but you also get this um this mystery this unrather trying to unravel what is going on and it turns out to be a much bigger mystery than at first they imagined and they're both assigned because the the people at the bank don't really think that either of them are going to really figure it out but of course the two of them team up and their gifts sort of mesh together and they make a great team so here we have emerson knight who is um intelligent and uh, you know it says he's good looking but he's very odd (laughs) to put it (laughs) one way he's eccentric I guess is what they say in the description and he you know he blurts out whatever he's thinking he has no concept of time sometimes he he communicates in his own head just in ways that he's just a very odd person to be around but he you know he is intelligent he does have a way of doing things that does eventually get things solved he's a different way of looking at the world and so when he's paired up with Riley who is this, as as it says, no-nonsense Harvard business graduate. You know, she's she's driven, she's focused, she is uh, looking at her career, she has a specific goal in mind, and her dream job, unfortunately, turns out to be babysitting Emerson Knight. You know, she's, she's told to go and, and look after him, she's told to go and do these things, and it ends up that they end up getting involved together in this investigation, in this mystery that takes them, as the description said, to the vault of the Federal Reserve in New York City, but also to Area 51 in um, New Mexico, which is very strange, you know, so you get these really odd moments in the book. The book is funny. You could put it under the category of maybe beach reading or vacation reading, however you want to look at that. It's a fun, light reading read, uh, but also draws you in with that sense of mystery and figuring out what is going on. There is some danger in the book, of course, as they get sucked into a situation that is much deeper and goes much higher than they originally anticipated. So they have to solve this. Now, not only is Riley, this focused graduate of Harvard Business and Harvard Law, but it says, you know, she's also from Texas. So we do meet her family in Texas a little bit, and so you get to understand a little bit more about her, and they are, you don't get a lot of them. I'm going to assume that we're going to meet and get to know them a little bit more as the series goes on. The same with Emerson's aunt, 
who is this very, very sweet, very wonderful woman who just kind of takes everything that Emerson does with a grain of salt. I mean, when Riley shows up at his house, it's like she's walked into a zoo. The, there's um, there's some animals that have gotten out that you wouldn't necessarily expect to find in someone's house. And everyone just kind of takes it in stride like, well, yeah, you know, this is what happens when you live with Emerson. So it is very very silly on some ways and very serious in others as they try to solve this uh, mystery and stay out of danger and get out of danger of the danger that they don't manage to to stay out of. We are going to take our first break right now, but when we come back, we'll be talking a little bit more about Janet Ivanovich and Fief Sutton. So stay tuned and I will be right back. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I am talking today about the Night and Moon series by authors Janet Ivanovich and Fief Sutton. It is a mystery series. It is a bit of a caper series. It is definite um, summer vacation reading. It's fun. It is, um, it's it's fun, but it also has the serious side of a mystery to solve, and it is developing these characters that we're going to see more of. There are two books, as I mentioned. Curious Minds is the first one, followed by Dangerous Minds, which is out, and which, as I mentioned, I have not read. So it is, um, like I said, a mystery series, and the second one is called Dangerous Minds, and I will give you the uh, overview of that, even though I haven't yet read it. The irrepressible charming duo of Emerson Knight and Riley Moon returns in another gripping mystery by number one New York Times bestselling author Janet Ivanovich. And this one is just by Janet Ivanovich. So this is not co-written. Dangerous, Dangerous Minds is not co-written I am seeing by Fief Sutton. So I just learned something new as I am reading this introduction. So it says, Buddhist monk Wayan Bagus lost his island of solitude and wants to get it back. The island was about 200 miles northeast of Samoa. It had a mountain, beaches, a rainforest, and a volcano. And now it's gone. Poof, vanished without a trace. Brilliant and boyishly charming Emerson Knight likes nothing better than solving an unsolvable, improbable mystery. And finding a missing island is better than Christmas morning in the Knight household. When clues lead to a dark and sinister secret that is being guarded by the National Park Service, Emerson will need to assemble a crack team for help. Since a crack team isn't available, he enlists Riley Moon and his cousin Vernon. Riley Moon has a Harvard business degree and can shoot the eyes out of a grasshopper at 50 feet, but she can't figure out how to escape the vortex of Emerson Knight's odd life. Vernon has been Emerson's loyal and enthusiastic partner in crime since childhood. He now lives in an RV behind Emerson's house. Together, this ragtag, mismatched trio will embark on a worldwide investigation that exposes a conspiracy 100 years in the making. So I think that these descriptions of both of these books really give you a good insight into how this series is, what kind of a series it is. So it's definitely tongue-in-cheek. There's definitely some silliness that happens. I mean, you've got a, a disappearing island right poof it's just vanished without a trace that's not something that you expect to read in most book uh, descriptions and you've got these characters that come together that seemingly have nothing in common but then somehow manage to figure out a way to work and um, Emerson's cousin Vernon is in the first book and he is about as different from Emerson as he can be, but somehow they make it work as, just as Emerson and Riley somehow make it work, even though they clash at times because Emerson is 
uh, so kind of scattered, whereas Riley is very detail driven. She's very detail oriented. She would prefer to have lists and have contingency plans and have everything mapped out. And um, Emerson would just kind of like to jump in with both feet and see where they land. So together they kind of balance each other out. And then Vernon comes in and he, um, as it says, lives in an RV in the back backyard of Emerson's house. And the RV came into play in the last book when they were traveling around trying to stay off the radar. So you get this very strange team that comes together to solve these mysteries. You get very strange mysteries that they have come together to solve. And you get um, just kind of, I don't know if you want to say zany, if you want to say madcap, but they are very enjoyable and very fun to read. And like I said, they're kind of up there with, you know, beach reading reading or um, vacation reading, if you want to put it that way, just kind of fun, slip into the story, take your mind off the rest of the world and enjoy a really fun romp. And as I said, the second one uh, just lists Janet Ivanovich uh, as the author rather than being co-authored by uh, Janet and Fief Sutton. It is um, the second in this series. I do not see if there's a third one. This the second one has been out for I think a couple of months, so there's not a third one listed that I see yet. But there very possibly could be. I am going to assume, I know what they say about assuming, but I am going to assume that at some point the tension, the chemistry that is felt between Riley and um, Riley and Emerson will manifest, culminate, however you want to put that. Uh it it seems to, you know, it's a romance. There's a little bit of a romance. It's a little bit of a mystery, a little bit of a romance, a little bit of a comedy, etc. And so it, those things tend to develop and, and lead to a certain inevitable conclusion. But it's just a matter of when will that happen? How long are they going to drag it out? How long are they going to resist? Etc, etc, etc. So that is the description of the second book. I thought the first one was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. I liked the characters. Um, they're they're very different from the other books of Janet Ivanovich's. I mean, they're very similar in terms of you get these odd personalities coming together. Um, you get people that maybe on the surface of things don't quite seem to know what they are doing. It, that's not so much the case with the Fox and O'Hare series because um, Kate in that series is an FBI agent. She is highly trained. She knows exactly what she is doing. And then her partner in crime, literally because he is a criminal, is Nick Fox. And he definitely knows what he is doing as well. Although there's, there's some there's some peripheral characters that come and go and they are... They are, they're skilled and they're experienced, but they have some interesting ways of going about things as well. And so they bring humor to the situation. So um, they definitely know what they are doing. Now, Emerson and Riley in this series are both very capable. They're both, both very intelligent. Emerson is scatterbrained and he has no social skills <laughs> whatsoever, but he does have skills. Um, it's just that, and Riley obviously is very intelligent. She's, you know, Harvard business, Harvard law. She is on the career path. She knows what exactly she wants to do in life, but they do get stuck in these situations, you know, Riley didn't go to school to solve mysteries. I'm sure she didn't think that she was going to school so that she could find a Buddhist monk's missing island of solitude who now wants it back, right? So it's another instance of characters being thrown into situations where they don't necessarily quite know what they're doing, so they have to figure it out as they go along. They have to find people who can help them to figure it out as they go along, and those characters are often quite interesting to say the least they are often quite quirky they are often quite hilarious um and that does not diminish the fact that the mystery also involves often a, a bit of danger a bit of excitement you know a bit of narrow escapes and those types of things so as i said this series gives you a a multiple of genres um, um multiple different types of reading depending on what you like if you like a little mystery you've got that if you like romance you've got some of that not quite so much yet but you know it's it's definitely pointing in that direction if you like comedy you've got that if you want a light vacation read perfect here you go so it's um a variety of genres in one it's got a lot of great 
characters and it is definitely developing these characters of Emma, Emerson Knight and Riley Moon and you know I love the I love when authors come up with these interesting names you know Knight and Moon um Knight K N I G H T in case you haven't seen it so it is a play on that of course with you know the moon it comes out at night obviously and you don't need me to explain this to you. I don't know why I am. I am rambling. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take our second break of the podcast. And when we come back, we'll be finishing up the podcast. And I want to look at the other series that Janet Ivanovich co-writes with Fief Sutton. So stay tuned and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I am talking today about authors Janet Ivanovich and Fee Sutton, authors of the uh, the first book of the Night and Moon mystery series called Curious Minds. Dangerous Minds is the second book in that series written um, just by Janet Ivanovich. And as I mentioned before, they also have written, um, co-authored another book called Wicked Charms, which is part of the Lizzie and Diesel series. And it looks like there are three of those, Wicked Appetite, Wicked Business, and Wicked Charms, two of which are written by Janet uh, Ivanovich, and then Wicked Charms is uh, co-authored Janet Ivanovich with Fief Sutton. So I am interested in in figuring out why they co-author some books and don't co-author other books. If you know the answer to that, I would love to hear it. I haven't done really any research, so I apologize for that, for bringing up questions that I can't answer. But that is a question that I do have. So this other series, the one that I'll start with Wicked, the Lizzie and Diesel series, if you have been a fan of the Stephanie Plum books, you know that each of them is... Uh, they're, they are titled by number, so it's very easy to figure out which book comes next because they go in chronological order by numbers. But there are also what are called between the numbers books, and these are shorter, smaller novels, and they tend to uh, take place around a holiday, so they don't, uh, you know, they're between the numbers, so they don't have numbers in them. And they are very strange in that while they still involve, you know, all the main, all the characters from the Stephanie Plum series, they bring in a little bit of a supernatural element with this character of Diesel, who just shows up in Stephanie's life. And so they are a, um, they diverge a bit from the plot of the Stephanie Plum novels, because suddenly very strange sort of mystical things are happening, kind of supernatural things are happening. Diesel is, um, he's described, you know, of course, as very good looking and um, Stephanie already has two very good looking men in her life. So now this third one pops in, literally pops in, like he just appears in her house. So it's a little bit strange. And then there's this, uh, spinoff, um, the, with Lizzie and Diesel. So Diesel then shows up in these other books, all of which have Wicked in the Appetite. So let me give you the description of the first one, which is called Wicked Appetite. It says seven stones of power, and this comes from Janet Ivanovich's website. Seven stones of power. No one knows when they were created or by whom, each said to represent one of the de seven deadly sins. For centuries, treasure hunters have been eager to possess the stones, undeterred by their corrupting nature. The list is long. Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, Napoleon, to name a few. 
Now the stones have found their way to Salem, Massachusetts, and so has Gerwolf Grimoire, adding himself to his rogues gallery of power seekers. He's an uncommonly dangerous man with hunger for the forbidden and a set of abilities that are beyond ordinary. Abilities that he feels entitle him to possess anything he might desire. That would include Elizabeth Tucker, the woman he needs to find the stones. She's freshly transplanted from New York to Boston's North Shore, with a new job as pastry chef at Dazzle's Bakery and an old house inherited from her Aunt Ophelia. Her life is pretty much on track, until it's suddenly derailed by a guy named Diesel, a rude monkey and a ninja cat. Lizzie can handle the monkey and the cat. She's not sure about Diesel. He's offering up his own set of unusual talents, promising to protect her from the gr from grimoire. The kind of protection that Lizzie suspects might involve, involve guarding her body day and night. The seven deadly sins are pride, greed, lust, envy, wrath, sloth, and gluttony. That pretty much covers everything that is wicked. Diesel thinks it also pretty much covers everything that's fun. And Lizzie thinks Diesel and the seven deadly sins cover everything her mother warned her about. So again, you can see that there's definitely a theme when it comes to Janet Ivanovich's writing. You know, you've got these these two characters that are thrown together who seem like they don't have anything in common. There is going to be some sort of mystery, some sort of adventure. They have to help each other out and they have to use their gifts and abilities. In this case, you've got a little bit of mm, magic, supernatural, something going on there. I mean, this takes place in Salem, which of course, you know, is where the Salem witch trials took place. So I'm sure that probably has, you know, some things to, going on. You've got the seven stones of power, the seven deadly sins. You've got all of these different things. And I'm sure, you know, there's there's the, the house that has been inherited by the Aunt Ophelia, etc., etc. So I just wanted to bring this up because it is the third book, Wicked Charms, is co-authored again by Janet Ivanovich and Fief Sutton. Again, there's three in this series, Wicked Appetite, Wicked Business, Wicked Charms. So if you have read the Stephanie Plum series and wonder, uh, have ever wondered what that Diesel guy is all about and why he pops up in the Between the Numbers books, you can read more about Diesel in this series. Uh, let's just call it the Wicked series because they all have Wicked in the title. And again, um, third book is co-authored by Janet Ivanovich and Fief Sutton. So that is the tie-in. So there I've given you a couple of different things to check out. If you have not checked out either, you can check out the series the Night and Moon series by Janet Ivanovich and Fief Sutton. You can check out this Wicked series, uh, also one of them written by Janet Ivanovich and Fief Sutton. And depending on what you're in the mood for, they both offer up some mystery. One offers up a little bit more of a supernatural edge to it. The other, mm, not so much supernatural as maybe a little bit mystical. I would, I would describe Emerson as a little bit mystical in the, or maybe a lot mystical in the Night and Moon series. So that is where I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you so much for joining me today as we talked about not only this Wicked series, but also the Night and Moon series by Janet Ivanovich and Fief Sutton. I hope you will join me next week because I have another author interview lined up. I'm very excited, as always. And this is with author Kathleen Barber. And she has uh, her debut, debut novel is coming out uh, the 1st of August. It is called Are You Sleeping? It is a thriller and it is so good. I loved this book. So please join me next week as I talk with author Kathleen Barber about her debut novel, Are You Sleeping? In the meantime, as always, you can find all of our podcasts at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can download those podcasts on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, any app that you use for your mobile device and you can follow us on social media i would love to hear from you on social media so instagram facebook tumblr and twitter gsmc book review so again i would love to hear from you on social media as always thank you for joining me please join me again next week but before next week gets here i want you to go out and get yourself lost in a good book thank you You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. 
gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program. Thank you.